So I'm joined uh, today by the lovely George Mathers from Mathers uh, in Aberdeen, uh, a well-kent face, I'm sure. Um, how are you, George? I'm very well, thank you, Edith. Good. It's good to see you. Yes, likewise. And thank you for agreeing to, to take part in our quiz. Um, I know that there'll be a lot of people eager to, to watch this um, <laughs> video once it's released, so thank you very much for agreeing to it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, let's just get uh, into the questions. So our first question for you, George, is if you weren't a lawyer, what would you be? Um, it's difficult really to um, think what I might have become if I hadn't been a lawyer. Although initially I did try to become a doctor. That's what I studied medicine initially at university. Ah. Um, having gone to school in Thurso, I don't remember any career advice being given to us at all, <laughs> although my wife also went to the same school. Um, she thought there was one talk given, but I certainly don't remember that. I do remember one sex education talk, but that, that's all, <laughs> um, but nothing about careers. So I had no idea what I wanted to do really, except I thought I wanted to help people. And that's when I ended up doing uh, medicine, but that only lasted uh, a year. Uh, and then I had to make a choice. I was out for a year after that. and. Uh, took a number of jobs. Now I went back to university, I had to decide what to do after that. And at that time I thought if I can't do what I thought I wanted to do, um, where was the money? Mm. And at that time it was either dentistry or law. And uh, couldn't, sorry, that's the dog. <laughs> couldn't, uh, that's, that's Bella. Oh. Um, so I couldn't face the prospect of looking at somebody's mouth for the rest of my life, so I decided to do the law. And, um, and he, here I am. So I suppose uh, either a doctor or I was always very fond of sport, mm -hmm. and I particularly liked football. Uh, and I one time thought I might be a footballer, but um, probably just as well I didn't follow that course. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'll just grab Bella for a well, moment. Don't worry, if I don't worry. Um, we're hoping to see her later, but let's see her. Uh, should we make her? She may be wanting to make her debut. Oh, there, there she is. <laughs> She's very she hello. Oh, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Is she a board terrier, George? She is, yeah. 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 Oh. Got, we have two labs as well, but she's oh. the boss. Yeah, the, the a small one for it. Are. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she's just bright. <laughs> She's just brighter than the, uh, the labs. <laughs> so going back to your, um, <clears throat> well, you, you said you started, you did a year of, of medicine and was that yes. at Aberdeen, George? It was at Aberdeen, uh, yes. And so what, when, what was it that made you realise that medicine wasn't for you? There was one subject I just couldn't get my head around. And the, the first year of medicine, you don't do any real medicine. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's science. And although my father is a, a chemist or was a chemist, uh, I just couldn't get my head around organic chemistry. Really? Uh, I just, just couldn't understand it, all these formulas and so on. And I thought, oh, no, it's just not for me. Um, so it wasn't so, the cadavers or anything? You hadn't reached that stage of cutting? No, we, we, we did actually do that. And that didn't bother me at all. Right. And, uh, those were the lectures I quite enjoyed, which when I did the law, I was very interested in the forensic side of it. The right. Forensic medicine side of it. Um, so, uh, so either a footballer or um, a doctor, or the only other thing I had thought about was becoming a professional sailor. I used to love uh, yachting uh -huh. um, and toyed with that for a wee while. But uh, in those days, it was very unusual. It's far more common now, but mm. in those days, very unusual occupation. So I'm glad uh, that I chose the law. Yeah, very good. All right. Um, Question number two, George, is did you have a nickname at school? And if so, what was it and why were you given it? <laughs> well, the only nickname I remember is when I was in primary school and uh, my dad at that time worked for the UKAA uh, in Aldermaston. Uh, I was the only Scots boy in the whole school. So I was called Mac and mm -hmm. that kind of developed to Max. So it was either Mac or Max. I was, I was known as, as a, a youngster. Uh -huh. uh, I've been called a lot of other things, but that's the only <laughs> nickname I remember. <laughs> and you mentioned there that your wife and you were at school together, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So have you known each other all your life or, or from school days? Certainly from school days, yes. Uh, 
I suppose she became my girlfriend when I was about 15 or 16 and uh, still together. Oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> oh, that's a really nice... Right. Nice. You think so? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. My parents actually met um, in school as well, um, but um, my my mum says that my dad called her all sorts of names over the school uh, wall because it was separate separate <laughs> playgrounds in those days. But um, no, I think that's really very sweet <laughs> and great. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pass it on to her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, George. Number three is what was your first job? Um, I think it probably was as a student, well, a Christmas job as a postman, okay. um, which I then developed further in my year between medicine and law. Uh -huh. uh, and also I worked for a short time at a, a local crab factory, which was quite an education. Um, the, the many older ladies who worked there, uh, and my mum wouldn't let me in the house when I got back because of the smell <laughs> from the factory. <laughs> Um, so, so that didn't last very long either. And then I had a job um, during that year off, uh, loading some 100 weight bags of cement onto lorries at this big warehouse, which uh, certainly developed me physically yeah. and turned out to be quite a good job because uh, I later, well, years later, represented a number of my former work colleagues from that place <laughs> when they got into trouble. Oh, dear. <laughs> So a variety of um, yeah, like different manual, jobs. manual kind of jobs, and and what were you? What was the the crab factory? Was that kind of dressing crabs, or certainly getting your hands? Well, yeah, you had to boil the crabs and then pass them down the line, and that's where they were they were dressed. Oh my! So I, I was mean a good. I was smell. a boiler. <laughs> you were a boiler. Yes. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> All right. Question four, George, is what do you recall of your first court experience? Um, my first court experience took place uh, after I'd done my original uh, apprenticeship. It was a, an apprenticeship in those days on the traineeship. Uh, and I went to a different firm as an uh, assistant. And I was sent down to the... Um, small debt court. Uh, we'd acted for the co-op, I think, and there was some small debt. And I was just given an instruction, just go down there. And when they call this particular case, you stand up and you say, for the pursuer, I move for decree. I had no idea what it meant. And um, <laughs> Usually I got away with it, but if somebody stood up and said they had some kind of defense to it, I had no idea what to say next. <laughs> uh, that, that's my first recollection of civil um, the civil court. Yeah. My first recollection of the uh, then G, uh, district court, which is now the JP court, uh, that's what made me decide that civil law wasn't for me um, and criminal law was. Uh -huh. uh, because I remember that trial, I still remember that trial. Uh, my first trial in the, in the district court, uh, which was successful, uh, incredibly enough. <laughs> uh, what was it? It was a, ch a chap who was charged with being drunk and incapable. And uh, I just asked a couple of questions in cross-examination of the policeman. Uh, and I just said, well, did, you, did he argue with you? Uh, yes. Um, I take it it wasn't uh, too polite. No, it certainly wasn't. Uh, but he was able to have this debate with you, if you want to put it that way. And he said, well, yeah. And I said, well, couldn't have been incapable then, could he? Uh, and he had to agree. <laughs> uh, and of course, he should have been charged with um, drunk and disorderly, uh -huh. but that was the diff that was a wrong charge. So he got off, and oh. I thought, I really like this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. And then the the rest is history, obviously. Well, <laughs> um, well, the, the other thing was the uh, only other experience I had in the civil court uh, when I was working as an assistant, and the. My, my new boss decided to go on holiday the, the week that I joined and I'd go down and do a civil proof. And I'd never, uh, that was the first time ever really I was asked to do anything in court. Mm -hmm. And I just no idea what to do. Um, and I think one of your questions might be, have I ever made a mistake in court? Uh, and that was it. <laughs> uh, that, 
<laughs> that, that taught me, and I haven't been back in a civil court since, and I've no intention ever of appearing again in the civil court. <laughs> it put me completely off. <laughs> oh dear, what a shame. <laughs> oh, all right. <clears throat> Question number five, George, is uh, who is or was your most inspiring colleague? Um, probably uh, one of my partners, my longest um, serving partner, w uh, William Findlay, who does the civil work in the office. Uh, and he inspires me because of his work ethic. Uh, he started off as an engineer on a fishing boat uh, from Peterhead, then decided that he uh, wanted to study law, uh, got his degree uh, and became an assistant originally and then um, became a partner. He's been a partner for decades and uh, a lovely guy and he works harder than anybody else I've ever met in my life. Uh, really? So from the work ethic point of view, uh, he really does inspire me. Yeah. The, I suppose the other one that perversely in a way inspired me was uh, the person who employed me as an assistant uh, because he seemed to do very well financially <laughs> and I didn't think much of him, of him as a lawyer. And I thought <laughs> if he can do it, I'm sure I could do better. <laughs> So I suppose that inspired me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, I've been inspired by many of uh, your colleagues, mm. um, senior counsel, junior counsel, ever since. Yeah. Uh, and I remember as a student queuing up to uh, to go into Aberdeen Sheriff Court to watch the the Garvey trial. You may or may not remember it. It was uh, chap Max Garvey who was um, murdered by his wife and her lover uh, and Nikki Fairburn was defending and I just loved the theatre of it yeah uh, that is just fantastic but that, that of course was long before I qualified uh -huh. and uh -huh. but but that th those are memorable yeah. cases amazing yeah so I think that's right as you say you, you know you are inspired throughout your career aren't you and you can, yeah. and you continue know. to be yeah, absolutely. You, can, you, you watch someone and think, well, my, my, that works well, or you're a really impressive uh, pleader or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, question number six, George, is how do you define success? Um, well, as I said, I loved sport. I was, I suppose, very competitive and I just love winning. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> winning trials is very, very satisfying. But I think mainly the success is building a, a team, a legal team, uh, who have been successful and loyal um, and having the respect of your colleagues uh, and of the bench. I, I think that, that defines success. Yeah. And being happy in your work. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's what I regard as being successful. All right. OK. Question number seven. A uh, bit of a distant memory, but where is your favourite holiday destination? Um, it, it's actually in Scotland, uh, a wee place up beside Tain and uh, Rochard, a place called Port Mahomac. Oh, right. Uh, I know it well, yeah. Do you know? Well, oh, yeah. well uh, you'll know that. In um, Hilton, which is one of the seaboard villages further around. Yes, so, just on the other side. Yes, yeah. that, that's right. Well, Port Mahomet is the only west-facing village on the east coast of Scotland, and you get these beautiful sunsets. Yeah. Um, and we have a cottage there, and I like it because that's the place we don't, at least I don't take as many holidays as I probably should. Mm. But if I do get a break, that's where I tend to go. Oh. Um, I also love going on my motorbike, going to the continent and my pals and so on. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I would say Port Mahomet is my favourite place. Oh, lovely. And uh, <laughs> nice little restaurants there as well. Um, yeah, yeah, they certainly are. It's yeah. a stunning little place. Um, yeah, we love it up there too. <laughs> good. Um, all right. And that's good that you're, well, perhaps not at the moment, but uh, it doesn't take so much. You don't have to get on a plane and go there. So hopefully you'll get back there soon, George. Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to at the moment, of course. But, minute, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Question number eight is, which is your most memorable case? Um, 
is that my most memorable case or just any memorable case? I think your most memorable case. My most memorable yeah. case. Well, I suppose that first trial in the district court, I, I certainly <laughs> remember that. Um, but the, the, the other case, we were, well, we've been in, involved in several very serious cases. Um, one of them, uh, the case of Hector Dick, who was associated with Nat Fraser and the murder of Arlene Fraser. Yeah. Um, and I had the, uh, the honour and privilege of instructing Donald Findlay, QC, uh, and he, he was just brilliant, uh, as he always is. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably that, that one. Okay. Say, Hector Dick. Yeah. The, the, the other one that springs to mind is one where James Riley, um, who, who I had great admiration for, um, so articulate, so eloquent, uh, and he would just hold a jury in the palm of his hand. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a high court jury trial involving uh, a skipper of a boat from Holland uh, who was charged with um, being concerned the supply of a huge amount of, of drugs mm -hmm. in the boat. And it was very interesting because the there was information or intelligence about that. And of course, the boat was um, intercepted and uh, searched and so on. They couldn't find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then someone had the idea of measuring the entire length of the, of the, the boat and then measuring all the internal spaces. And they found there was a space of about four feet, which couldn't be accounted for. And it was a false bulkhead and crammed into that were tons and tons of cannabis. Um, <laughs> so that, that was a really interesting case. Yeah. And I remember the, the skipper was a, he was a real charmer. Uh -huh. and he would come into court every morning and it was a, mostly the jury was comprised of, of females. Mm -hmm. and, and he came in and he, and he just looked at them and said, Good morning, ladies. And, <laughs> and you can just see, see these jurors <laughs> just um, falling in love with him, I thought. Didn't get him off, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but an entertaining, ent entertaining to watch and, and watch uh, Jim Riley. Well, to watch Jim Riley in action, it was, it was a real education. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. All right, question number nine, George, is who has had the biggest influence on your career in the law? Um, it's, again, difficult to say. There's so many uh, advocates and the senior counsel, um, but, but perhaps the, the lawyer who first employed me uh, as an, uh, an assistant mm -hmm. and who went on holiday and left me to go into the the court, uh, and I remember that first uh, civil case I was asked to go and do, never been in a civil court before. Yeah. And I said, but I, I have just no idea what to do. And he said, oh, there's nothing to it. You just go in and argue the toss in front of the judge. <laughs> and, and those were the instructions for that, uh, that case. But it, it taught me a lesson, do not go into court unprepared ever again. Yeah. Um, and, and the influence was that it, it taught me that I really had to get my head around the case, understand it fully, uh, in order to do my very best for the client. Mm. So I suppose in a peculiar way, uh, he influenced me. Yeah. And I think, though, it's, it's making those, you know, you've got to make mistakes or you've got yeah. to feel... Um, humiliated to remember, you know, yeah. to learn a lesson from it, because if it didn't affect you, then you would perhaps continue to just float in without without preparing. Well, yes, that, that's exactly right. And yeah. as it happened, the, the sheriff uh, that I had to appear before in that civil case was well known as being very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and he certainly gave me a torrid time. Oh, Although he, he used to be in the sailing club that I joined later on, so I got to know him a lot better. And I think he was just kind of nervous in court. Uh, nothing like as nervous as I was, but, um, but he was difficult. And, and that uh, oh, it was a real lesson for me. Yeah, yeah, I know. And my, my toes are curling for you as we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there and, you know, that's and learned from it. And I suppose it, it shapes the lawyers we are today, doesn't it? Yes, very much so. It certainly does. <laughs> All right. Um, question number 10. Your funniest or most memorable court moment? 
Well, there'll be quite a few of them. Um, <laughs> I remember appearing before Sheriff Russell, a lovely, lovely old gent who unfortunately died many, many years ago. Um, and we just started a trial. It was a housebreaking trial. And um, there was no way we were going to finish it that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the first witness, and, and then Sheriff Russell said to the clerk, loud enough for me to hear, um, he said, well, we're going to have to adjourn this to, a, to another date. Um, but I don't, I don't want these housebreakers to know that I'm going on holiday. <laughs> and I only heard one witness. <laughs> uh, so, so that was a moment. Uh, other moments, not so much in court, but preparing for court and going to the cells to see the client. Um, one of them had a bad stammer, I remember, uh, and I was asking him questions about his finances for a legal aid application, uh, and he was struggling over it, and he said, inf 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 and eventually got it out, infidelity benefit, <laughs> when it should have been invalidity benefit. <laughs> Um, and another one that springs to mind, uh, Davy Gilmore, again, a client, a bit of a, an alcoholic, died many years ago as well. Um, and he had a habit of phoning the police and either saying he'd set fire to somewhere or there was a bomb being, being placed, these um, hoax bomb calls. Uh, but he did so often that the police, and it used to be the police who answered the phones in those days rather than civilian um, employees uh, got to know his voice and he was on the phone and said oh uh, there's a bomb planted in this building in market street and the officer said uh, is that you davy and he said no it's not me <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course he, he was caught just at uh, just outside the telephone box uh, just a few yards from the building that he said oh. was going to be bombed uh, just that that's stupid. But, but he, so, somebody in the cells had told him about the special defense of alibi. So when I saw him in the morning, um, I said, well, I presume you're pleading guilty to this, David. Oh, no, no, I was thinking of um, uh, alibi. I said, but you're caught right outside the phone box by half a dozen policemen. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Oh, okay. Again, this indicates the mentality of some of the people we have to um, the inadequate people that we have to try and represent. I know, but you do get a laugh, George, don't you? You, you certainly do. Yeah. yeah, and I think um, I think with the some of the the cases we have to deal with, a laugh, a welcome um, break to the kind of depravity and all the rest of it that we the yeah. black uh, darkness that we have to um, wallow in a lot of the time. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of these people are poor souls, but um, there is humour yeah. there as well. And they Yeah, yeah, they are. And you just wonder where their lives went wrong and, and you can't help feeling sorry for them. Yeah. Uh, and you just do want to do your best for them. But, but some just are uh, not necessarily wicked or evil, but just inadequate. They just can't manage. Um, and very often turn to drink or, or drugs. And, um, yeah. But yeah, it's all work for us. It is. Uh, and the, so, cynic, or the cynical mind may say, well, that's to your benefit. But yeah, you do. There's, they do fall into the kind of mad, sad and bad. But the majority are either yeah. sad or mad. The, the, the yeah. percentage of really bad people out there is pretty low. And you just have to have a look at their backgrounds and... You know, people say, oh, well, that's good use. People have been brought up in similar backgrounds and not gone off the rails. But yes. uh, just childhood traumas and things that you just can't even imagine uh, in your own life. Uh, you yeah. can see yeah. things have gone terribly wrong for them. Um, it's not an excuse to commit crime, but, you know, I often think, <laughs> even in this freezing weather, just the way you think... If I was living out in the street, I'd be wanting to get my hands on as many drugs as I possibly could to literally <laughs> where I was, you know, so you can surely you can understand. Yeah, well, absolutely. You can understand uh, the problems they've got and the, and the temptation of yes. taking anything that will remove them in, for a short time, at least yeah. from that background. Yeah. Or from reality, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. 
Uh, sorry, I'm now lowering the mood. <laughs> oh, no. Try to raise it again. I know. All right. Um, question 11, you've maybe touched on already, George, but it's the one uh, of we all make mistakes. What have you learned from a professional error? So you've already spoken about... Uh, yeah, that, that was the one and only real experience in the civil court. And that uh, was my mistake and uh, it won't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dear. <clears throat> All right. What do you do to stay well, George? How do you keep fit? Or um, Walking the dogs. Um, anything physical, really. What I do find, I have to say, is a real therapy is using my chainsaw. <laughs> because it's uh, and log splitting uh, it's just so destructive uh -huh. and so immediate you get an immediate result um, <laughs> uh, and that's just uh, such a change from the court yeah. where you you start a case it might be a year before you finish that case mm -hmm. um, but with the chainsaw it's an immediate result with this log splitting an immediate result <laughs> so I find that therapeutic um, but anything for I love Skiing, sailing, um, just getting out and about. Too old for football, I'm afraid now. But, um, but that, that kind of outdoor activity, I, I just enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sounds good. The chainsaw and the log split. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see why there, that would be um, quite satisfying uh, just to take all your frustrations out on that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it does. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Question 13 is, what advice would you give on dealing with challenging clients? Um, to remember that you're there as their lawyer, not as their friend or social worker. Um, be patient with them, but um, do not allow them to become in any way abusive and make it clear that you are there to offer advice. Uh, and that if they don't like your advice, then they can go somewhere else. Don't uh, don't mollycoddle them, um, and don't take any uh, anything you shouldn't take from them. Mm -hmm. um, and just impose boundaries, really. Yeah, that would be my advice. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how I deal with them. And, uh, only very seldom have I been threatened by uh, clients, although I have been once or twice. Um, and basically just uh, just showing them the door to say that that's not tolerable. And yeah. if, if they're insulting to any of my staff, uh, I just make it very clear that that must stop or you just, uh, we will not take you on. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, they come to us because they think we can help them. Yeah. Um, and I like to think we do help them, yeah. but not at any cost. No, no. But I think they respect that, and um, you know, you don't, and you don't have to do that with any aggression yourself. And you're a, certainly strike me as a very gentle man. Um, so you know, and I think if you treat people the way that you want to be treated, then that is reciprocal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the main, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, all right. Question fourteen, George's. Would you recommend law as a career? Yes, I think I would. Um, when I started in my apprenticeship, it was a general firm uh, that conveyancing, executives, civil work. Uh, one of the partners did a small amount of criminal work. Um, and I didn't know when I became an associate, uh, sorry, uh, moved on to the to the other firm that I was mentioning, yeah. and eventually became a partner in that firm. Um, I didn't know what I'd be letting myself in for, and I certainly didn't ever imagine myself as a court lawyer. Mm -hmm. But having won that first uh, district court trial, that just gave me a taste for it. And from then on, I've really enjoyed the criminal law. It's just so interesting. When yeah. you're dealing with people with their problems, and you're there to try and help them um, and try to resolve as best you can. Their problems. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want an interesting life, I would certainly recommend criminal law. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend conveyancing or any, I, I just find that completely boring, mm -hmm. doing notes on title and things, if I remember right. Um, executory is again, I, I just didn't like sitting in the office all the time. I far prefer being out of the office. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, at school, I thought, whatever I'm going to do in the future, it's certainly not going to be an office job. Mm. Um, although, of course, we do now spend a lot of our times in the office, but um, I just enjoy going to court. Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, I think I would recommend that to anyone. Yeah. But there's obviously, uh, it's difficult at the moment for young students yeah. coming out. There's, there are limited jobs. Um, but I don't, I think if somebody's, you know, if, if we've got the heart set on being a criminal lawyer, then who are we to dissuade them from it? Obviously they've got to go in with their eyes open, but um, I teach on the diploma at Glasgow University and I feel um, sorry for these young lawyers that are, you know, so keen, so bright. Yeah. I, certainly put me to shame. <laughs> I remember my <laughs> diploma and it, it was nothing like that. I think I spent 80% of it shopping and the rest <laughs> turning yeah. up to, like, uh, to tutorials or whatever, but they're so keen and so um, committed to it. So I feel, um, you know, if, if, if that's what they want to do, then really they should be given every opportunity, but uh, recognising yeah. it's difficult just now. It is very difficult for them, uh, but I, I've always I, I found it difficult to get an apprenticeship initially, right. uh, not having anybody connected uh, with the law. Mm -hmm. well, well, apart from one uncle who I think was just a conveyancer in a different uh, town altogether, uh, and I remember going around umpteen firms asking if they might want to take on an apprentice and just getting knocked back and knocked back. Although I did get good advice from one uh, assistant who interviewed me. And he said, I think it might be a good idea um, if you're interviewed again uh, to get rid of the beard and the anorak. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got a suit and, <laughs> and then I did get an apprenticeship. Um, but but I, I feel an obligation to try and assist these youngsters. And I've always tried to get a, a trainee. Mm. Um, and we've, well, she's no longer a trainee. She's now qualified. Yeah. Um, uh, in our office, but I think there is an obligation on those of us who are in inverted commas established mm -hmm. to try and bring on the, the profession. Yeah, because you know, as we all get older, and you know, if you're not got these young folk coming in, then what happens to That's legal right. representation? It's yeah, yeah. That, well, that does trouble me. I have to say, because um, in Aberdeen, I'm well, I am the oldest one still practicing there. But most of them are middle-aged, um, one or two younger ones, but very few. Mm. Uh, and we've got to get more involved in this side of the profession, or I don't know, it's just become moribund, and that would be a disaster. It would. Uh, it I certainly wouldn't recommend anybody to come into legal aid, for example, mm. um, criminal work, or, or even worse, I think, civil mm -hmm. legal aid work, uh, if you want to make a fortune at it. But if you just want an interesting um, and I think rewarding job, then it's an excellent job. If you want to make money, then go into commercial law, I think would be the, the sensible advice to give someone. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, question number 15. What aspects of your job bring you the most satisfaction? Winning trials. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, in addition to that, I'm hopeless at admin, and I've got a very good secretary, Maggie, and a terrific um, team. All, all the girls are just excellent. They all get on well together. Uh, they all want to try and help the firm to be successful. The um, other partners, uh, the assistants, all of them are very good lawyers. Um, and I think keeping that team together Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned it earlier, and just having the respect of your colleagues, I think that's hugely important. Yeah. And um, I'm not just saying this because I'm interviewing you, George, but that shows from your firm. I mean, I've, I've, as you're seeing, everyone from the senior partners right down to the your assistant, uh, you know, your admin assistants are all very yeah. efficient. And But I think that's because they're invested in your firm. You know, they're not just doing it because it's a job mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but that comes yeah. with being treated with respect as well, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes, yeah. And all the lawyers fully respect all the staff, and I think that's reciprocated. Yeah. And long may it continue. Absolutely. And I hope it continues long after I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question 16. Um, what skill should every lawyer have or learn? Um, 
I think the main one is uh, to be a good listener. Uh, listen to your clients, um, take time to understand exactly what their position is. Um, it's very important also to be articulate, um, patient, and persuasive. But, but I think the main thing is to listen, listen carefully, um, and respect the client, and let the client know that you are someone uh, who can be relied upon to do your utmost uh, for that client. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's right. I think people can lose sight of what they're actually doing. And um, yeah. at the end of the day, this is somebody else's life that's been entrusted to the man. So that's... Sorry, that's bad again. <laughs> I think she's, she's desperate for her screen appearance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's remembering that you know this is somebody's life that you're you're dealing with. Hello. <laughs> hey, hello. Oh. Oh. Edith. <laughs> she makes a very strange noise. Is that her barking or or just is that the noise she normally makes? She, she's just whining. I think to get out get out of the room. <laughs> oh, is she? Oh, I see. She's, she's, been, she's been trapped in there for her, yeah. for her moment at question eleven. Poor dog. Well, let's move on and we'll get to her questions. Yeah. <laughs> Um, question 14, sorry, 17 is your favourite chocolate bar, George? Um, crunchy, I think. Okay. No, nothing very sophisticated, <laughs> but uh, I've always loved crunchies. Yeah, that's the, that's the first uh, crunchy answer we've had on, on this quiz. Oh, really? First, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question 18 is, what job would you be terrible at? Anything involving admin. <laughs> um, just, just hopeless at that organizing things uh if it wasn't for maggie at work and uh and my wife at home then uh, i'd just be lost I, just, yeah. I can't be bothered with it i've no patience for it and i'd just far rather leave it to someone else me too so. <laughs> i don't have a secretary <laughs> As, uh, i always say it you know you'd think that doing fee notes would be the most enjoyable part of the job once you finish, but I can't stand it. And it's a no. task in itself. Yeah, me too. It seems to be common amongst lawyers. I, I don't think we're particularly um, admin minded, to put it that way. So um, it, it's a common, sure. common trait amongst us, I think. <laughs> All right, question 19, um, your favorite animal. Um, We've already well, you just met her. Um, <laughs> I, I, love, I love the labs as well. They're, they're lovely dogs. Um, but Bella has a personality. Right. Uh, in fact, I think she's got ADHD or something like it. She demands <laughs> attention, uh, <laughs> as you can see. Yes. Um, and, and she keeps so I, others in order, does she? I'm sorry? She keeps the others in order. Oh, definitely. She's the boss. Right. Yeah, and McGregor, the big male lab, he's a huge dog. Um, and Ellie, the female, uh, again, much bigger than Bella, but she rules the roost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and is she younger than both of them, or how does yes, she? Yes, yeah. yeah. She's only uh, just over a year, a year oh, old. She's very sweet. Um, <laughs> border terriers that can be... Uh, I don't know. I, I know a few just from out walking, and some are very friendly. But there's other. There are others who are appear friendly, and then they kind of turn. Um, oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. <laughs> and if I show too much attention to the other dogs, she's immediately yapping, yelping, and jumping up at me, and uh, insisting on getting most of the attention. Oh my. Oh, so how how do you keep her under control, George? Are you also bossed about by her? <laughs> uh, with difficulty. <laughs> but, uh, she, she's reasonably biddable. Oh. But out, out on a walk, she seems to find everybody else more interesting than me, and she just takes <laughs> off and follows other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's very sweet. Thank you for, for letting us see her. <laughs> So we've reached the last question, George, which mm -hmm. is, uh, what questions should we have included in our quiz? Um, would I do it all again as a, as a lawyer? Right. And uh, I think the answer would be, would be yes, but I would do it in a different way. Um, because 
uh, I mentioned about Willie Finley working extremely hard, but we all work hard. Mm. And uh, I, I really regret when my kids were much younger, uh, I would be away in the morning before they got up and they'd be in their bed before I got home at night. Uh, and I kind of missed out on that. Mm. Um, and the, the whole work family balance was askew. Uh, so I, I would change that, but I wouldn't change the job. Right. I was trying to get a, a better, a healthier balance. That, that I think, would have been yeah. um, far better, which yeah. is why I'm, I'm missing the grandchildren at the moment because they can't, they can't visit and I can't visit them. Yeah. But um, family life uh, is, is very important. Well, Bella's come back just to see. Oh <laughs> Hello again. Come here. Come here. There you go. There oh, now. my. Oh. Stay bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, George, thank you so much. That has been so interesting and entertaining. Uh, I've really enjoyed um, doing this quiz with you, and I know that uh, our audience will, will thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I feel insight into uh -huh. something that we, we all know and love, but it's good to just hear a bit more um, about you as a person as well as a, a lawyer. So, thank you very, very much. No, thank you very much, Edith, and for making it so easy. I was very nervous about it to begin with, oh. but um, I'm very much obliged to you. Well, there was no need um, to be. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope that I'll, I'll see you soon, George, in the flesh once things Likewise. lift a bit. All right, thank you so I much. I hope so, Edith. too. All right. Thank you, Edith. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.